Brian Tanty, director of the Fox Museum. Um, we've brought three cars here today, but probably the highlight car is, is this car here, the 300S um, Mercedes-Benz. It's one of um, only a handful that were made. And uh, the car was probably Mercedes-Benz's first attempt at post-war sports luxury cars. Um, it was a genuine 130 mile an hour motor car. But the car has an interesting owner. It was owned by Ring, uh, not by Ringo Starr, it was owned by Vin Crosby. So uh, it's one of um, a $15 million car collection in the Fox Museum. So when you purchase a car, what, what sort of state What's the criteria? Uh, the car was fully restored actually, it was restored in the US. We, we bought it out of America and was fully completed over there. Mm. And can I ask what sort of value would be placed on it? Well, it, like it would inevitably be a lot of money if it came up for sale. Lindsay's more of a, um, a buyer, not a seller. He very rarely sells. I've been with him 11 years and he hasn't sold anything in the 11 years that I've been with him. Um, but he, he tends to be... Um, a buyer more than a seller. The car would be worth a lot of money if it ever came up for sale. It would probably be in the order of a million dollars, but it would it would depend very much on the market. The market, the classic car market is very fickle, obviously. Yeah. So it's your job then to do some research and to locate these vehicles? My job, on? initially I was employed by, employed by Lindsay to build and restore the cars. So I'm a coach builder by trade, it's, it's, it's my background. Um, but the um, cars themselves, my role now is to develop the museum and look after the cars in the collection. Lindsay buys the cars themselves. He doesn't. He doesn't. Um, he usually makes it, makes all the decisions in terms of where the cars come from. Occasionally, if he buys something with a shadow over its history or something, or its reliability or its uh, its constitution as a car, well, then I'll look at the car for him. Yeah. So, an individual that wants to get into the area of, of collecting cars, yep. are there traps? Can Many. you get caught? Thousands of traps. Have you ever been um, caught? No, not myself, but I've heard lots of stories through being involved in the industry. Yep. What sort of traps are there then? Um, condition, quality, history, uh, bogus body numbers, chassis numbers, it, it, it goes on. Um, usually the best source of information is always the car clubs. Um, getting onto the right people and knowing the ownership of the vehicle is important. And getting in with the right networks, knowing who the collectors are, who the people are that buy them. Um, they're, they're usually the best places to go. How long would it take to restore a car, generally speaking? Well, again, that's that's very subjective from car to car. Some cars can have anywhere up to five or six thousand hours in them, and some can have only a thousand hours. It all depends on the condition and what it needs to to get that car on the road and get it right. So, as a coach builder, yep. you would have to make panels. And that's right. We we fabricate new car bodies from flat sheet of steel or aluminium and generate a three-dimensional surface off that and turn it into a motor car.